Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the battery plugin by LSDT. This device is going to be plugged to the balance port of an ordinary battery and make it a smart one by enabling you to wirelessly monitor the status of the battery using the battery application which is available for both iOS and Android devices, automatically enter storage mode after a set amount of time and save it some time when charging it using a compatible charger. The battery plugins are available in three versions for 2S, 3 and 4S, and 5 and 6S batteries. The current supported chargers are the K2 Air, K4, and Air 8, which is the one that I'm going to test in this video along with the battery plugins, and more supported chargers are going to be available soon. The price of each battery plugin is around $5, and currently, as ISDT are promoting this new accessory, when you purchase the Air 8 charger, you're going to get two battery plugins included with the charger. In terms of weight, the 2S battery plugin weighs 3 grams, the 3/4S version weighs 3.9 grams, and the 5/6S version weighs 4.7 grams. In addition, in case you are worried that the battery plugin is going to deplete your battery when it is not in use, you should not worry as its power consumption is very low and when the voltage per cell is going to be lower than the storage voltage which is configured using the battery application, it's going to enter a very low level mode which is even not going to make the battery plugin recognizable by the battery app. In order to use the battery plug, after downloading and installing the battery application, open it up, connect the balance plug of your battery to the battery plug, and the battery application is going to automatically recognize it as an unknown battery. Selecting the unknown battery is going to enable you to configure it, and under the initialization menu, you'll be able to select the battery type, set the number of cells, which should be detected automatically, set the charge and discharge rate, the capacity of the battery, the manufacturer, and the password which is used for resetting the battery plug. Once the initialization procedure is complete, you'll be able to personalize the battery by setting its name and a scan filter. Set the full charge voltage, which is defined by the type of the battery which you previously selected. Set the storage voltage. Set the charge current, which is limited by the C rating that you previously defined. On that case, it's 1C on a 1500 mAh battery, so it's limited to 1.5 amperes, and this value is going to be used by the supported charger once the battery is going to be plugged. Next, you can set the auto storage timer, which is by default disabled. In case you are going to configure it, once the set amount of time that you are going to define is going to pass, the battery is going to be discharged to the storage voltage. In addition, you can calibrate the detected voltage per cell, and in order to save your settings, press the save button, and then press the button on the battery plug. In case you would like to reset the battery plug to its default state in order to use it with another battery for example, select the battery plug that you would like to reset, under reset all settings, enter the password of the battery plug which is by default 1 to 8, press reset, and now as you can see the battery plug is detected as an unknown battery. Now as you can see I've got three different batteries connected to a battery plug-in. By short pressing the button on the battery plug-in, the battery is going to be identified on the app and bump to the top of the list, which is useful in case you have a lot of batteries. You can also use the keyword filtering, and then, for example, you can switch between different batteries, and the LED on the button is going to indicate the power level of the battery. So, for example, this battery is almost empty, as its power is less than 20%. This battery is almost full, as its power is over 90%, and on this battery, the power level is between 20 to 90%. Here is an example of all the different options which are indicated by the LED. 
so you'll be able to easily distinguish between a butter plugin that was already initialized and the one that was not. As for the Airit charger, basically it's a DC charger which is capable of charging up to 8 test batteries at a maximum current of 20 amperes and a maximum output power of 500 watts and it is pretty much identical to the Q8 charger besides the fact that it supports the butter plugins. Once a battery with a butter plugin is connected to the charger, its charge settings are going to be automatically detected by the charger based on the settings that you've entered in the butter application. So for example, this is a 6S like a battery and the charge current is set to 1.2 amperes. You cannot adjust the battery type and you can only do it using the butter application. However, you can adjust the current up to the maximum rating of 1C in this example, it is 1.2 amperes, and if you are going to set it to a lower value, it is going to be saved. So once the battery is going to be connected again, the current is going to be still 0.2 amperes, unless you are going to change it using the battery application. Now I'm going to disconnect this battery and connect another one. And by the way, you have to wait for this LED to slowly flash in a blue color, as it is going to indicate that the battery was successfully detected by the charger. In that case, it identified a 2S LHV battery and the charge current is set to 0.3 ampere. Now, by the way, in case it's not clear, you can use the Air8 charger and the other new chargers by ISDT that support the battery plugin with normal batteries. And the only difference is that under the charge menu, you'll need to select the battery type, current, and etc. And the settings are not going to be predefined for you. Now I've got the three batteries which are connected to a battery plugin inside my battery storage box. And as you can see, even after putting these batteries inside this big metal box, they can be identified by the battery application. So I think that it is going to be pretty useful in case you have a lot of batteries. So you'll be able to monitor their voltage without having the need to find the batteries and manually test them. In my opinion, what I've just demonstrated is the highlight of the battery product and that's why you might want to consider getting it. And the ability to automatically detect the battery which is connected to the battery plugin by the charger is an added bonus. And as for the discharging feature, it is done using a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. So it is going to take a while to fully discharge a battery, especially a big one, as the discharge current is going to be between 10 to 20 milliamperes. Anyway, that's going to be it for my quick review of the ISDT battery plugins. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.